Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our May Terrence Family Forum at Emmett Belknap Intermediate School. I'm Paul Kowalski, building principal, and we'll introduce everybody else on the screen. Um, actually, before we even get going, let's go around the screen right now. We'll everybody uh, see a view and uh, start uh, with Mr. Murray. Go ahead. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sean Murray, sixth grade assistant principal. Hi, and I'm uh, Julie Chavon. I'm the fifth grade assistant principal. Hello, I'm Mike Finnerty. I am a sixth grade science and math uh, teacher and also our science chair person at our building. Thank you, everyone. Um, and as you can see, we have our administrative team here and as well as Mr. Finnerty um, in his role, um, not only as a teacher in our building, but as science department chair. Um, one of the topics on tonight's agenda is an overview of our, our science curriculum, and Mr. Finnerty will be uh, providing that uh, momentarily. Um, the format for tonight uh, will follow the format of our previous parent forums with um, starting with a social emotional topic as well as, um, or followed rather by an academic topic, which tonight is the overview of our science curriculum. Um, one important thing to note, and we thought that it was a timely um, thing to bring up at this point during the year, um, our, our topic, our first topic this evening, actually does contain a social emotional component, but um, we are going to focus on our summer programming that will be um, offered at Emmett Belknap Intermediate School. And we'll also touch on some of the programming around the district. Um, there will be a social emotional component to that, as well as an academic component but thought that given the time during the year uh, that we're in right now, and some questions that have been received, that now would be a timely manner of um, getting early word out about that. So that is what we will uh, start with tonight. Bear with me just a moment. I'll be presenting my screen. Um, throughout this evening, um, just as a reminder, you can send questions. Um, as in the previous forums, to ebquestions at lockfortschools.net. That email address will be monitored by uh, those of us that are presenting this evening, and we will do our best to get to your question um, at designated times and as a part of the presentation. Um, if you are watching this on, um, on delay or uh, a recorded version, um, you may still submit questions at any time. And uh, rest assured, we will receive those questions and um, get back to you. Um, and if for any reason we don't get to questions during this presentation this evening, um, one of our administrators um, or an appropriate staff member, depending on the question, will reach out to you uh, via email um, to respond to that question um, very soon. So once again, thank you for joining us. And again, the purpose of these forums, including this one tonight, is to help parents and families learn more about social emotional resources and academic programs at our school. We've done introductions already. Um, in, in addition to myself, Mrs. Chavon and Mr. Murray are joining us, along with Mr. Finnerty, um, our science department. I've already spoken to this. Um, very quickly, but on tonight's agenda starting off, um, I will be going over an overview of the summer extended learning opportunities at Emmett Belknap Intermediate School. And those opportunities include an in-person program for students entering grades five and six at Emmett Belknap. It's important um, to know um, when both in tonight's presentation and as you may read anything coming up uh, or being posted about the summer programming, um, we're referring to the grades that students will be going into. So Emmett Belknap Intermediate School being a grade five, six building, will be hosting a program this summer for students that are going into grades five and six. So those students are currently in fourth grade and in fifth grade. So in other words, the students that will be at Emmett um, in the fall of 2021. We'll also touch on a virtual extended learning program that is offered or will be offered by North Park Junior High School. And that will be for students entering grade seven. 
and we'll be talking about that this evening because that is a program that some current Emmett Belknap sixth graders would be eligible for. And then once again, um, Mr. Finnerty will be um, reviewing our science curriculum along with some tips and tools to help our students. And as mentioned before, you can send questions to ebquestions at lockportschools.net. We'll monitor this throughout the evening and um, you know, once again, answer them as they come up. And if this is after the fact, we will follow up with you. So kicking it off um, into summer extended learning programs and um, for any of our other presenters, feel free if, if um, you'd like to jump in at any point. Um, the Lockport City School District will be offering building-based extended learning opportunities this summer for students um, in, in grade entering grades one through six. So that's students currently in grades K, K through five. So they will be entering grades one through six in the fall. The key thing I wanna emphasize there is that those will be building-based extended learning opportunity programs. So an opportunity for students to participate in extended learning during the summer in the building. At Emmett Belknap Intermediate School, this includes, as mentioned, all students entering fifth and sixth grades. So that is our current fourth and fifth graders. Transportation will also be available for those students meeting criteria for busing. But again, there's criteria. Um, th this programming will be throughout the, the district. There is criteria at each level for busing. But um, that is something that wanted to bring up. Transportation will be available for those students meeting busing criteria. The hours for the program uh, that will run at Emmett Belknap are from 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. And the program has been designed at this point to run on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, it's a three day a week program that will begin June 29th. So that is the Tuesday following, immediately following the conclusion of the regular school year, running through August 5th. So again, a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday only program, leaving Friday, I'm sorry, Monday and Friday as non-school days in this program. The curriculum, uh, while is, it's still being finished and tweaked, um, curriculum will be available, uh, programming rather, will be available in math, English language arts and social emotion in the social emotional area for one hour each, each of those days. So there's three hours of attendance. Students will be scheduled one hour for math, one hour for ELA, and one hour of a social emotional um, program. At Emmett Belknap Intermediate School, as well as um, the elementary buildings that fall into uh, the the grade bands I just mentioned. Um, the, the first criteria that we'll, we'll look at are students that are currently receiving tier two or tier three AIS, the students that may be attending um, our math or our reading labs for supports. Um, we will also be looking at student performance on the Lockport City School District English Language Arts and Math Benchmark Assessments. Um, our goal is to, as we have the program um, details finalized, to be able to host as many students as we, we possibly can within um, these guidelines. These are the criteria that we will start with. And again, um, I should emphasize, because um, it's a question that we've received in the past regarding summer school, um, students meeting criteria will be invited. Um, it is ultimately a parent decision. We we hope that parents and encourage parents to um, to have their children participate if they receive um, invitations. Um, should we find that there are additional spots available, um, we will look um, once again to make sure that we can provide opportunities to those students that um, uh, may meet some of the criteria that I just mentioned. Um, our goal is to hopefully have as many students um, as we can complete a program um, this summer that are willing to, that will help um, make up for um, any learning loss or deficits that uh, may exist um, at this point. 
I mentioned earlier that um, that program was for grades one through six in the district, the in-person program. Beginning with students entering grade seven, so that's our current Emmett Belknap sixth graders, um, there is a extended learning program that will be offered virtually through North Park Junior High School, grade, students entering grades seven through nine. Again, that is our current sixth graders. That program will look a little bit different. The schedule, um, you can see it on the screen, runs Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with two sessions. Um, one for ELA and one for math, not necessarily in that order, but students would attend uh, for one hour, 8.45 to 9.45 with a 15 minute break, and then another hour from 10 until 11 a.m. Um, this virtual programming will be offered through Google Meet, which is how um, much of our uh, virtual learning has been occurring throughout the year this year. And it's also important to note that a, a very similar program ran this way at North Park last summer. Um, and that is what this is modeled after. So again, students currently in sixth grade will be eligible, uh, may be eligible for a virtual program um, that will be hosted by North Park. The criteria that North Park will look at, at least initially, is student performance on the Lockport City School District ELA and math benchmark assessments, um, specifically scores uh, below 50%. Um, they will also be looking at student performance on the STAR exams. They're given periodically throughout the year to all students to measure performance in math and ELA. And teacher recommendation will also be considered. Um, Dr. Smith and team at North Park um, have worked closely with and will continue to work closely with the staff at Emmett Belknap to um, gather this data. And um, again, as we move into June, um, recommendations will be made and invitations will be uh, sent out from there. So at this point, that's a summary of the extended learning opportunities at uh, that will be offered in Lockport City School District affecting students um, that either will be coming into Emmett Belknap Intermediate School or leaving. If there are any questions uh, related to the extended learning program, now would be a great time to send them in to ebquestions at lockportschools.net. If there is not, I'm going to pause here as we transition over to science, but uh, rest assured that we'll continue to monitor the questions and be ready to uh, come back and answer any questions that may be sent our way as we move forward. Okay. And Mr. Finnerty, are you ready to jump in here? I am ready. All right. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kowalski. All right, so as you guys know, I am uh, Mr. Finnerty, a sixth grade science and math teacher at Emmett Belknap. Um, as I mentioned before, I am the science chairperson at our building. Um, we wanted to spend a little bit of time with you guys today, talking tonight about our science program at Emmett Belknap. You know, at Emmett Belknap, I think we have a great science team of fifth and sixth grade teachers. I think they've done a great job of transitioning to next generation standards. You know, we have already aligned our curriculum and we're implementing uh, currently new teaching models that are um, more consistent with how science should be taught and how students should be learning according to those standards. Now, I wanted to start off by sharing a couple of short videos showing some sixth grade students uh, presenting their Rube Goldberg machines as part of an energy unit. And the students were taught the principles of potential and kinetic energy and energy transfer using a 5e model and as part of their demonstration of learning um, they had to create a Rube Goldberg machine now using everyday household objects and materials and it was supposed to demonstrate a maximum amount of energy transfers in the longest amount of time so I'm going to show a couple videos to see what some of the results were of what the students came up with Okay, 
that was our first student. Let me show you another example of what some of the kids came up with. This is my Ruth Goldberg machine. <laughs> And then finally, Rube Goldberg attempt eight. So, you know, the students, um, a lot of planning went into this, a lot of designing, a lot of engineering work went into making these, and each student in our sixth grade team designed their own machine. Now, even in a restrictive environment as our hybrid and remote model, students were able to create machines that truly exhibited a higher level of understanding. Um, this was a great STEM activity that incorporated science, technology, engineering, and obviously math. Now, as we move forward with our science program, there is going to be calling for a change of instruction. And at Emmett Belknap, we're embracing that change into our next generation science standards. In front of you, I have a slide that kind of shows you where we're headed in terms of instruction. You know, um, there's a huge change that it, or transition in the last few years from a recall of abstract facts and note taking and scientific method to having students demonstrate proficiency by scientific practices such as models, designing solutions, constructing arguments, and having a better understanding of scientific concepts and core ideas. You can clearly see that with the Rube Goldberg machines. Now, the shift is using a 5E model, where students are working in a more uh, flowing, interactive model that has a, more of a student focus, and it's utilizing the three uh, I guess you can say dimensions of scientific practices, core ideas, and cross-cutting uh, concepts. Where you know kids are doing more of the work of what scientists would do, and using what they know and what they've learned, and trying to think and act and re replicate those in the classroom. You know, um, you know, the focus is more on understanding real-life phenomena and trying to understand or solve engineering problems. You know, students also with this project created aircrafts that were required to fly a certain distance and stay in the air for a specific period of time and that was all utilizing a 5e model and you know and you know the shift is what we're looking for is a shift from traditional scientific lecture model to uh, a more of a you know engaging atmosphere where students are really deriving the instruction and they're really getting involved in in what we do in the classroom um Taking a look moving forward, our fifth grade science team, the teachers follow obviously in your, um, our uh, next generation science standards, and they use that in conjunction with the BOSI science kit to cover a lot of the following topics. For instance, life science, physical science, earth and space science as it pertains to stars, and also earth and space science as it pertains to water. There's four main kits that they utilize throughout the course of the year. And in conjunction with these kits, they utilize uh, Mystery Science, Generation Genius as well to support the learning and what they're doing in the classroom. A lot of these are very hands-on very hands on, and very in-depth. And of course, you know, they are encouraged to use those five e-model, uh, I guess you can say instruction techniques as they're teaching these units. Now in sixth grade, um, we have three main units. We have our matter and chemistry unit, 
our energy and STEM, which you guys got a chance to see some of the product with our Groove Goldberg machines, and then our weather unit, which most teachers are currently working on right now. Um, one of the exciting things for next year is um, we're looking to uh, take on the Amplify program, which is basically an online, uh, I guess you can say, phenomena-based science program. And it, it is completely aligned with New York State standards. And one of the, the nice things about it is it's going to give sixth grade students an opportunity to experience what they're going to see in seventh and eighth grade. Um, seventh and eighth grade teachers are committed to utilizing this program. It's an all-encompassing, really interactive, amazing program. It can be used in hybrid, remote, in, in class, and it really covers all bases. And what's nice is they're going to get some exposure to that prior to going to seventh, eighth grade. And I think that it'll be huge for them to become familiar with that format. Now, you know, science is, is, un, is un, I guess you can say, unlike some of the other subjects and with some of these changes with um, instruction and how we're going to be delivering and some of the things we want to pass on to parents and students as we move forward to next year. You know, one of the things with the switch to 5B, it is a growth mindset. It's a process. So staying on top of daily assignments, the readability in science has always been a little bit higher. The rigor is a little higher. So staying on top of those daily assignments are key. You know, the more actively involved a uh, child is in their lessons, the better they're going to end and the more they're going to get out of it. You know, science should be more interactive. It should be more hands-on. And students with this new, new set of instruction is going to be, you know, they need to be willing to discuss ideas with other students be willing to engage and explore concepts. And, you know, we're starting to see that more and more with some of these, you know, some of these changes over to what we're doing. You know, one of the things we want students to do is understand the process so they know what the steps are. They look for the steps and encourage your child to ask questions. That's one of the biggest things of this is asking questions. Why? And trying to make sense of it. You know, whether you're using it through observations, whether you're using your own life experiences, and then transferring that to what you see. And the key is we don't want them to be afraid of making mistakes. You know, kids that, and especially in sixth grade, they have a fear of making mistakes. I mean, some of the best inventions came from mistakes. So we want to encourage that because, you know, we get success from our failures. So that is, you know, one of the things we want to promote uh, where people feel more engaged and not and willing to take risks. You know, our labs and our projects and our science um, kits, you're going to have to plan on, on having students spend more time. They are a little bit more time consuming, you know, especially as we move closer to 5E instruction, it's going to take more time. It's a process. You know, it's not, you know, one and done type of situation. The focus is on data. It's on evidence and using that evidence to support the results, their evaluations, their experiments, their labs, their projects. You know, in terms of quizzes and tests, you know, as we get higher up in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, there's going to be more of a switch from vocabulary to understanding concepts and understanding those ideas as it relates to everyday phenomena. And that is key. You know, studying for science, as I mentioned, is different than math in ELA. You know, I'm going to click on my slide below. You know, some of the things you're going to see is because of the rigor and because of the readability of some of these units is, you know, some of the tips I give my students every year is one of the things I would pass on to you as parents is, you know, studying in smaller increments, studying what we call chunks. You know, instead of, you know, old school ways of study for 60 minutes or two hours all at once. Well, brain science tells us something different. You know, it's, you're better off to sm study in small chunks because we always remember what we did first and last. And the more first and last you have in a 60 minute period, the more you're going to retain. So what we recommend is 15 to 20 minutes, take a break, 15 to 20 minutes, take a break, and do it a couple times, and then you'll get to your 60 minutes or 90 minutes, however long you're planning. But you'll retain more in the process. We tend to lose what we, what we learned in the middle. You know, and the other thing is studying, you know, over a couple days as opposed to cramming it all in the night before the test. Brain science also tells us that, you know, we retain better when we do it over the course of a couple days rather than one day, a ton of information, only to forget it in the next two weeks. So that is what I recommend. As far as, you know, organizing notes, flashcards are great for this. You know, your definitions and key ideas, you know, making condensed flashcards, things like uh, Quizlet and some of the 
you know, Kahoot and some of these other programs that allows us to take flashcards and use them for study purposes are great. You know, and the one thing I tell my students, you know, we're living in this social media generation is unplug. You know, that's the hugest thing. Uh, you know, students these days, they create so much distraction for themselves. You know, if you're going to study for 60 minutes or 45 minutes, unplug. Put away distractions. Put away your electronic devices. Don't answer your phone. Get into part of the house where you're, you know, free of mind and you can truly study. You know, and those are some of the things I would impart on is not only for students, but also and parents to encourage. It's just good lifelong, you know, study habits and good for, you know, retaining information and in science. But, you know, for the most part, that's what we have. The biggest thing is our change of instruction and moving from, you know, old traditional scientific method and lecture model to a more hands-on approach, a more student-generated approach. And, and that's what we're looking to do over the next couple of years as we move further in our progression with next generation science. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak on it. Thank, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Fennerty. Fantastic job there, and covered really covered all of the bases. Um, Mrs. Chavon, Mr. Murray, anything that you want to throw in there at, at all? Uh, I, I would just say, I think um, as far as the science curriculum is concerned, it's an exciting kind of new era where students really are going to be connecting their learning and, and their design to real life problems. Like I saw in two of the Rube Goldberg machines, the, the machine actually performed a function. Um, and, and that's really, we, you know, we're looking forward to having students realize that learning or what they're learning is tied to real life needs in engineering design and can be actually used to solve real life problems. So I, I think it's a very exciting, like I said, an exciting era. And I'm, I'm glad that we have uh, Mr. Finity to help lead that. I'll, I'll just say something that went through my mind actually, and, and I'm a fl flashback to being a former science teacher, but Mr. Finity covered the fact that essentially there's, there's a lot more uh, we'll be, students will be asked to be doing more project-based things, going more, thinking more about things and, and, and coming up with solutions rather than just that rote memorization. Uh, that I think you used a phrase similar to that, Mr. Finnerty. And you know, I, I, that, that brought me back to my days teaching science where you know, the, the, the joy that I would see in kids for the most, the most joy was when they were doing the labs, doing the projects. So We'll see more of that coming, and uh, you know, thank you. You did a great job showing uh, what we're doing at Emmett uh, to try and bring that forward. So, thank you. Yep. Um, we this is tonight has progressed a little faster than many of these uh, our recent forums. I apologize for the clock dinging there in the background, um, but we are only about a half an hour in. Um, currently looking, I do not see a. Um, a question right now, but we'll check um, in just a moment. Before we, we do wrap up, um, so again, if you do have a question, feel free to send it to ebquestions at lockportschools.net. But I am going to present my screen just one more time because for anyone that's watching now or if you watch this later, whether you have a question or not, um, we encourage you to fill out a feedback survey um, that applies to not only tonight's presentation, but the series. Um, we've taken ideas from those surveys um, that have been submitted. Some of them have even been submitted weeks later. Um, people have watched on, um, on the, the website, on YouTube later, and um, used them as a team to develop um, ideas for upcoming forums. And we will have one more that's scheduled in about a month on June 8th. Um, so again, I'll just pre present my screen, excuse me, one more time to give everybody a uh, an idea of where they can find that. Um, bear with me a moment, please. Hey, if we, you should be able to see my screen right now, starting out, um, if we go to the Emmett Belknap section of the Lockport City School District webpage, under the Our School tab, go down to the second option, Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA. 
this is actually the page that um, if you're we're watching this uh, following one of the links in in our weekly newsletter or from the flyer that was sent out that link took you to this page um, you probably clicked right here where the date says May 11th um, what you want to do is go down a page to parent and family forum feedback survey you click on that you'll see a very short and simple um, form just asking for your name if you want to provide your student's name a contact email um, and just your thoughts of tonight's presentation and any specific academic topics um, that you may or social emotional topics that you may wish to see in a future um, forum and just because it's May and if you're watching this in a few weeks and it might even be June um, I don't want that to discourage you from making suggestions because um, you know anything that we may hear uh, as a suggestion this year could be something that um, we include in programming um, for next year um, it, whether it be in a format like this or something else um, and and one thing just while it's on my mind um, a lot more will be shared about this but in the past we have um, been committed as a team to um, really doing our best to orientate incoming students um, and one of the most common questions I've received as the building principal is well who knows what next fall will look like but uh, assuming the best case you're gonna have 80% or 90% of your students that really don't haven't haven't spent much time in the building um, that is something we're very cognizant of and be it through um, whatever in-person methods that we're able to do or or virtual methods that will be something we'll be working on um, between now and the fall. So um, I throw that out there as well. If you have specific ideas about that, whether you're um, a parent of an outgoing student, an incoming student, or fifth grader moving on to sixth, feel free to throw that in there. Um, always take your suggestions. So um, with that being said, I'll take one more look at our questions. I don't see any new ones. So um, with that being said, I'll we'll sign off and say goodbye for the night. Thank you, um, those people who did join tonight. Thank you for taking the time. If you're watching this later, thank you for taking that time. And I'll start once again by thanking Mr. Trinity for joining us as a special guest this evening. And uh, so thank you again, Mrs. Siobhan, Mr. Murray, and uh, we'll say good night to everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Do we break two? <laughs> what can I do? I, <laughs> I guess it lost its effectiveness after the first time. You know, if you define 12 as effective. <laughs> How many hits? Really? That's awesome. Jeez, that's cool. You, you know what? I, I didn't want to say this, but it was kind of going through my mind as I just said whatever I said at the end. But I, I if, if there's not a problem leaving this up, I, I almost think it could be. I want to review it again, but it potentially it could be used as uh, mentioned in orientation next year to parents. Like, you want an old. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah, I want to say that night we only had six or eight, so that's quite a few since then. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Rob.
You too. We'll uh, probably see you on Thursday to get those uh, answer sheets. I still never heard back from that parent who was coming in. So I actually, I'm going to try to reach out to them right now and find out what they're doing. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Josh. Have a good night. Yep. Bye. -bye.